Hello, and welcome to all of you who have joined us for this interview, which is part of the Cambridge Judge Business School video series, Leadership in Unprecedented Times. We sincerely appreciate that you're all joining us today. As a quick introduction, I'm Christoph Locke. I'm the Dean of the Cambridge Dutch Business School and a Professor of Technology and Operations Management. And we are very honored today to be joined by Gavin Patterson, the President and Chief Revenue Officer of the tech company Salesforce and former CEO of BT. Gavin is also a former member of our advisory board and a longstanding supporter and collaborator of the school. Gavin, welcome and thank you for coming. We are very grateful for the support that you have given us over the year, uh, over the many years. Um, and it's nice to see you again. And thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, it's great to be here. So to, uh, to start the interview, um, Gavin, uh, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and your responsibility at Salesforce, what the company does and your role. So for example, I'm curious, what does the chief revenue officer do? <laughs> well, um, well, first of all, um, I'm an alumni of, of Cambridge. I read chemical engineering between 86 and 90. Uh, and then um, instead of going into chemical engineering, uh, I've been a sponsored student by ICI. Um, I went to Procter & Gamble. I spent, um, I think, nine years there uh, in brand management jobs in the 1990s and then switch to uh, what it was called TMT in those days um, in late 99, uh, telecoms, media, and technology. Um, and then I had a terrific 20 year career in telecoms, uh, first of all, in what's now Virgin Media, then 15 years in, in BT, um, the last five and a half is the CEO. Um, though I think if you look back on those 20 years, I probably chose the wrong T, because uh, certainly, <laughs> Technology has been the place to be in the last 20 years, more so than telecoms. Um, that said, I had a terrific uh, time in, in, um, in that 20 years. Uh, I was able to do some really interesting things and uh, have no regrets at all. But uh, since leaving BT um, about 15 months ago, um, I moved into an initially a, a plural career. Um, uh, which included a role for Salesforce in a non-executive capacity. Uh, but in the last six months, I've moved into an executive role, um, initially managing the business uh, outside of the US uh, and now taking over um, the, uh, the US as part of that responsibility as the chief revenue officer. So in, uh, in, in other words, I'm in charge of sales and distribution for uh, Salesforce products and services around the world. That's what the job involves. Gavin, you mentioned earlier your, uh, uh, the fact that you were a graduate of Cambridge uh, from chemical engineering. So uh, may I ask you, how has your experience in Cambridge influenced your life? Well, uh, I had a fantastic time at, at Cambridge and, and it opened my eyes to so many things. Um, you know, I, I met some, some brilliant people here. Um, was taught by uh, some extraordinary individuals uh, and met a group of friends that, you know, even now, um, you know, 35 years later, something like that, maybe longer actually, you know, we're still great friends. Uh, and that network has carried you through life, you know, yes, on a business front, but more importantly, in terms of providing support and, uh, and advice as you try and steer through life. Um, and, 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 and Cambridge provides that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen elsewhere, but certainly I can say the group of friends I've got are, are, have been with me all the way through. Um, and then in terms of what I learned, um, I studied chemical engineering. I was uh, an adequate chemical engineer, but it, what it did teach me more than anything else, it taught me how to think um, and um, to think in ways that I could apply to different situations. and. You know, I found that um, has allowed me to, to, to move between different industries uh, and, 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 and different types of situations and feel very comfortable uh, that my, my problem solving skills would be able to adapt. So I started in chemical engineering. I worked sponsored by ICI. I then moved into brand management and marketing at P&G. 
Uh, I then flipped over to telecommunications uh, and now moved into software. And, um, and each time, you know, the fundamentals of how to think, um, not just in a, an analytical way, but also in a, a creative and, and conceptual way, you know, it's been the, the fundamental to, to the job. Uh, and that confidence comes from, you know, the excellent time I, I had at Cambridge. And, and just to finish, I, I'm, I'm now going the full circle because uh, my, my son is at Cambridge today studying uh, natural sciences. He's just finished his first year. And so I'm, I'm sort of going back to the future, if you like, uh, and, uh, and really enjoying seeing what Cambridge is like through, through his eyes. Now, you, you, you said something interesting, um, you know, just a second ago, you said um, uh, you implied that BT isn't tech. You are now in a tech company, but, uh, you know, tech is the place to be. Uh, but telecoms is tech, right? Uh, it is these days. There's no question about it. I think that the future of telecoms is software. Um, yeah. And, you know, particularly with 5G networks and... Um, mm -hmm software defined networks in, in, in the fixed space as well. Um, it's all about software. It's all about uh, programming, programming the network and, and, and making uh, uh, applications that run on it. And so I think the two um, converge, telco and, and technology over this period. Yeah. Uh, but when I started, it was different and uh, it certainly wasn't a software business then. Yeah. Now this this kind of leads us to, uh, to to another question that I would like to ask. Um, we are now in a in in a period of incredible change because of COVID. Uh, you know, and then there's also Brexit, um, and some companies are in deep crisis. Other companies are seeing opportunities. Um, uh, now Salesforce, as a tech company, is well placed. But what do you see as the dangers and opportunities for a tech business? Uh, but also, what is your view of, of the COVID impact on businesses more generally? Well, like many companies, uh, Salesforce has, has been in, impacted by COVID. Um, uh, but it was able to respond, I think, uh, very quickly. Um, you know, as a company, its culture is, is, is one of, it's built on agility and being able to um, respond quickly in situations like this. It, it's very... Uh, ensures that it's always relevant for its customers um, and it was able to pivot very quickly uh, when when COVID really began to bite and what did that mean? Um, it means focusing on employees, making sure we we gave them a degree of certainty, uh, reassured them with a, a no layoffs policy, uh, looked after mental health um, by ensuring that there was a strong program um, to keep people connected as, as people moved out of offices and, in, and into their homes. You know, it's a very different work environment working from you know your third bedroom uh, as people often describe it than it is working in an office and, and mental health challenges tend to be right at the forefront so you know, building a particular program to address that was very much on our minds and then for for our customers helping our customers migrate to their businesses without interruption to run uh, from uh, away from the office you now as a cloud-based business you know the market leader in crm um, you know our, our customers were able to do that pretty effortlessly and um, that's one of the benefits of uh, every, everything being in the cloud um, and so uh, while there was undoubtedly uncertainty for a few weeks um, as people organized themselves there was no business interruption and we we're able to help customers move forward uh, and in in places we've been able to accommodate you know, challenges to their own business model by um, changing the terms of, of contracts and indeed in, in some places giving free license use for a period of time. But um, communities are also important to the way we run our business. You know, <clears throat> Salesforce is known uh, worldwide for its strong sense of, uh, of social purpose. Uh, and so ensuring that we had a, a very uh, strong philanthropic uh, focus during this period uh, that included cash grants um, to communities that were really struggling but also doing things like using our supply chain to help procure uh, PPE equipment um, for hospitals um, initially in the US but we also did some for 
the NHS here in the in the UK. Um, so, you know, ensuring that you manage all your stakeholders and look after them um, through crisis. You know, that that was where our focus was, and uh, I'm sure it's the sort of thing that keeps us in uh, good stead with a strong uh, a strong support from our customers over the long term. I, I, I really like the holistic perspective uh, in what you just said. Um, now, in some businesses who, who have a, a broad perspective on their business but, uh, uh, and, and, their, and their product survives COVID, but their customers are hit and they simply cannot pay or, or, or buy the products anymore. So uh, Salesforce wasn't really affected by that very strongly. So you could actually go on uh, and continue to provide benefits. Yeah, um, I mean, we're there for our customers, and it's uh, it's. But it's clear that some customers are, are really struggling. Yeah. Um, and uh, and some, I don't think we're going to make it through this. Um, but others are seeing this as an opportunity to accelerate. Yeah. Um, particularly around digital transformation. I mean, to to borrow a quote or, or paraphrase a quote from Jack Welch, who always said, "If you don't have a customer, you know, you don't have a business." Um, and you don't have a job, I think, is what he said. Um, I think if you don't have a digital strategy and if you're not accelerating digital transformation in a period like this, uh, you won't have a business at the, at the end of it. Yeah. So, you know, that's what we've seen. We've, we've tried to remain, as I say, relevant to our customers all the way through, you know, initially helping them to stabilize their business, the projects, uh, products such as Salesforce Care. We're now going through a phase of helping them reopen mm -hmm. um, and bring their you know, employees back to the offices. And, and that's a lot harder to do than to shut, of course, because you need to bring them back safely in a coordinated right. way. Yeah. Uh, so having a platform such as Salesforce, which is uh, easy to spin up new applications and services in a matter of days on. Um, so we produce something called work.com that helps with that scheduling and that has proven to be very successful. Low code, easy to spin up in a matter of days. Um, and a very strong ecosystem around it to ensure that you can deploy it quickly to, to clients wherever they are. Yeah. Uh, and then the third phase will be all about, you know, how do you grow in the, the new reality? Um, and, you know, whether you're in a, a market such as home delivery of, of food delivery, like a Deliveroo or a takeaway where business is booming, um, or you're in the hospitality sector or, or high street retail, you know, we will get through this and we need to, you know, find a way to recover and, and grow our businesses on the back of it. And, uh, and that's where we, we feel as though we can play a role, you know, helping our customers, you know, be closer to their, um, to their customers, you know, and playing a role, be it in, in the sales journey, marketing, e-commerce service, analytics, field service, you know, these are all different clouds that uh, are part of the, the Salesforce suite these days and, you know, give us as a unique 360 degree view of, of the customer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you already alluded to um, the, uh, the changes uh, to the employees who had to work in, in their home office, uh, you know, and at some point they need to move back. Do you think there will be lasting changes to the way people work even when we have a vaccine hopefully, and, uh, uh, and, and the crisis is over? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I personally believe, um, you know, it, we won't sort of go back. Uh, I'd like to think that we go forward and use this as an, an opportunity to rethink the way we work. Um, I think a lot of it will actually revert to the sort of things we, we did before. So I do believe offices in, in city centres um, will be uh, you know, an important place where people will gather to collaborate. Uh, I, I'm not of a view that you know, those are, are things of, of history. I do think they will play a role in the future. Yeah. But clearly, we've, we've learned you know, a couple of things um, in particular over this period. One is that um, actually you can do an awful lot of business on video uh, over the internet. And uh, when forced to... Uh, to challenge some of the, the uh, preconceptions on that, actually, people realized that a lot of, of what we do, we can do via video and we don't need to meet face to face. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I see that continuing. 
Um, of course, when we're all on video, we're all equal. Um, and so, you know, there's no advantage of, of being there in person. Um, I think that will be challenged as some people are, go back and are part of a face-to-face -face environment in the office and some are on video. I think that will be a challenging moment. Uh, but undoubtedly, that feeling that you have to be there to close business, I, I think, is 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 something that is uh, is clearly being challenged, and I don't think it's going to be critical to the to the future. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the other thing that we've learned is that or I, I, I certainly believe there's going to be less business travel in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know going for a long trip overseas to see a client some of it will be necessary some of it clearly will will do by video and and that's one area that i think will be pretty slow to come back personally yeah yeah we're both we're both at home at the moment right which is a, which is a metaphor for this um now you already alluded to um the digital transformation and uh, how critical you think that is and i found your your example of adaptability quite impressive. Now, you know more broadly, what do you, what role do you think technology plays in uh, in the recovery and transformation of businesses? I think I think it's fundamental. Um, you know, I think uh, digital transformation is accelerating um, at, during this period, and mm -hmm. I think companies that don't have a digital transformation strategy that is, you know, going right the way through their business you know, through, throughout their um, supply chain uh, and the way they serve their customers. I think they're going to, as we come out of this, find themselves at a disadvantage um, because what is really clear to me in the businesses I deal with is that you know, many companies, and, and I would say some of the best companies I deal with, you know, see crisis as an opportunity to the point you were making at the beginning, Christoph. Uh, they're seeing this as a chance to accelerate you know, increase the uh, the gap between them and their competitors while while their competitors are, are flat-footed. Um, it, it's opportunistic, um, of course, um, but when we get through this, I think we'll find that the you know the competitive landscape will not be the same as it was on the way in, and a new set of competitors, uh, a new market structure will exist in in many markets, and um, you know companies that are you know, hoping to, uh, you know, see their way out of this by just um, sitting tight and conserving cash uh, are going to find that's not enough in my view. I think this is a moment where, of course, we need to look after cash, but um, saving cash without investment is going to leave companies, I think, struggling on the other side of this. So even if they make it through, they may not find that they last very long afterwards. Yeah, I, I, I'm nodding. And I can see what you just said, even in the state education business that I'm in. I, 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 can, I can see some of the things that you're mentioning happening, uh, even in higher education. So, you know, I'm nodding to all of this. Now, you know, let's come to leadership. You know, that's the title uh, of this series. What role does leadership, inclusive leadership, you know, in the times today play uh, in helping your company to move forward and maybe even, uh, you know, the country to move forward. Leadership at the level of countries is something which is also in the headlines today. Well, um, I think, you know, the COVID crisis is, is not just the only crisis we're facing at the moment. Uh, you know, there's the sustainability crisis and, and climate change. Um, that's not going away. And of course, uh, we've got a, a crisis of equality and social injustice that uh, has has been a wake up call for everybody, I think, during this period. So whatever we do as we we come out of this, uh, we must address not just the, the consequences of, of COVID, but, you know, how do we rebuild uh, uh, our communities, our rebuild how we go about our business and the way we live and, and educate, how we rebuild it in a, in a way that's more inclusive uh, and has a quality more fundamentally built uh, into the foundations. Um, you know, it's, everybody needs to do more. Everybody needs to, to look at their own behavior and, and ask themselves whether they're doing enough uh, and whether or not they've inherently uh, prejudice or, or bias in a, in a certain way. Um, 
Salesforce is a very progressive company uh, and I would hold it up amongst the, the best in the world. It often wins the best place to work uh, awards um, around the world. Very strong values, uh, a commitment to driving social good as well as uh, you know, profit for shareholders and, and, and not seeing it as a compromise. Uh, and amongst its values, equality is, is, is one of the core values of, of, of the business. Um, and it is something we talk about all the time. Um, but we too have found this, uh, this situation uh, with respect to Black Lives Matter uh, a real wake-up call. So ensuring that we've, we've, we're doing everything we can as a company uh, we formed a task force from across the business. Uh, so we're not giving a knee-jerk reaction. We want to drive sustainable change in things like, you know, what we do around people, uh, how we're lobbying on policy, you know, what we do within procurement, how we spend our money, how we can ensure that that is promoting equality uh, across uh, our business. You know, and many, many things. Uh, across the board, so that as we rebuild, we rebuild a world um, that is is more inclusive uh, and more equal, and that everybody has the opportunity to fulfil their, their 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 own potential and and get as far as they want. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for as business leaders, you know, this is this is just makes better business sense. You know, you know, having a a leadership team that represents and is consistent with. Your, your customers, I think, is a fundamental. Um, if it doesn't, representation matters uh, in that respect. It, it matters for your organization, being able to attract the very best talent, the best brains, and the best leaders from around the world to come and work on your business. You know, you can do that if you're, if you're able to, you know, look at all uh, the world, you know, regardless of where they're from. And um, it's very true in education as well. I know it's something you and I have talked about. Uh, in the past. So I, I think, you know, going back to your theme of uh, crisis being a, a moment of opportunity, uh, I, I think uh, it's also the case with respect to equality and ensuring that actually uh, we rebuild a, a world where everybody has a better chance to, to achieve everything they really want. Uh, and as leaders, I think we need to, you know, to take a, a critical role in, in, in ensuring that that is the case. Do you think that critical role will include also taking a public stance, or, or do you think if everybody just cleans up their own house, uh, then then we, we will be okay? I I think you know taking a you know cleaning your own house is clearly the first priority. Yeah, um, that's within your control, um, and even the best companies, you know, when they really take a, a hard look at it, will realize that there's bias uh, and missed opportunities and and. In some cases, relatively small changes of behavior can create real opportunities and fairness, uh, more fairness uh, across the organization. But I, I don't think that's enough. Um, and I think increasingly companies need to um, take a position and be prepared to lobby outside of their domain. Uh, and so, you know, one of the, the areas that our task force are, are focused on is policy. Um, and, and how do we, for example, lobby on uh, police reforms um, in an appropriate way. Yeah. Um, it's just one example. Um, you know, we need to be leaders, not just within our own markets, but actually in the world we live in. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you very much. That's, uh, I, I think these are reassuring words. So we come to the end of the interview. Uh, thank you very much, Gavin. I found it inspiring, uh, you know, how you talked about uh, the adaptability being there for your customers. Um, and I think your, um, your reminder of the fact that we are in a digital revolution, I think it's now really hitting uh, and COVID has uh, accelerated it um, and nobody will be untouched by this uh, and everybody should keep this in mind. Uh, and finally, your, your emphasis of the values that your company stands for. Uh, so thank you for sharing all of this. I think uh, this is very insightful uh, for everybody. Um, so again, Gavin, thank you very much for this. Um, but I also want to thank everybody uh, who is watching us, to all the alumni and all the other members of the CJBS community uh, who have joined us for this. So thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, Christoph.